well, that's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I did, I did go and hit the wrong button. Um, but yes, um, hello, welcome to Gaming Ken. As always, my name is Jack, and we're back with some more uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. And I have added a new function to my bot on Twitch. Um, now, I have things when I'm playing Pokemon Nuzlocke or uh, let, Chill Let's Plays, you can uh, name my Pokemon for me. Uh, like you can make sure you're top of the queue to name a Pokemon. Uh, and uh, when I was playing my chill run uh, and Nuzlocke, you could also use points to release Pokemon or even make me not be allowed to heal. When I was playing Mars Horizon, I had it set up so that you can name the next rocket. For, for single player games where there are multiple choices, um, I've decided that I will let, if you redeem it, by using exclamation mark redeem with a space after that and the word option, you will be able to make the decisions for me instead of me rolling the dice. Um, now, I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate on a Monday and that has multiple choice sections uh, where you can, in, in the dialogue, um, and uh, where where you can where you have options in the dialogue, and it's a uh, it will do that. Uh, I will not be doing it for Baldur's Gate because that is a multiplayer online game. Um, uh, two settings, and I will uh, make sure the timer is up for it to tell you when. Tell you what it is. Um, but yeah, I will be doing that, letting you guys do picks for me. Um, uh, exclamation mark redeem space O P T I O N. You'll know if you've got it because it will come up saying that you've done it. And what I'm also going to do for Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, yes, uh, as long as you don't write anything before it or after, I believe it should work. Um, it should come up with a noise and a wee thing on the screen if it works. Maybe, hopefully, I'm not sure. Um, There you go. But I'm going to make the game slightly smaller. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm just going to keep the things off screen. Okay, there you go. Uh, you've redeemed the ability to make my next decision for me, which is actually as we come straight into the game because we left the game off just before we started writing a poem. So, pick a word, please, Hathian. And uh, the command is on a five minute timer, so it can only go off once every five minutes. Special. And then what I will do is I will roll nine d10. But what I'm actually going to do, actually, while I've got a minute, I'm going to put a wee... camera on it okay so there's gonna be two settings um it's probably going to block part of my view of the game but it shouldn't be too big an issue um If I can move this camera around, it would be even better. So, 
we want it to go this way and set in fact no we want it to as you watch me struggle to figure out how to work a camera <laughs> um, and it's that one you get to see my my lovely keyboard and my dice tray there And we're going to bring this down here and make it smaller so you can look at my many multicolored dice. Because what's the point in having many multicolored dice if you can't show them off, eh? And now I broke that camera. Ha ha! This is something I really should have thought about setting up beforehand. There we go. But yes, you can see my nice pink dice tray with the with a galaxy on it. My many nicely coloured dice. Which I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Uh, it's, it's my fault for not having it set up ahead of time. But that's the way it goes, isn't it? So we'll... We will roll nine... Nine dice. Uh, bring the game back up. Right, so first up is the number seven. We were doing down and then down last time, so we'll continue with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's because I was trying to do too many things on the fly, that's why. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then that there is another seven. And then we've got a number eight. And a four. And a three. And a nine. A number one. Put that back where it was. Eight. Oh, they got the new D and D book. Oh, the is it? Oh, what's it called? Uh, was it Van Richten? Van Richten's Guide to Monsters or something like that. Uh, oh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Ah, in fact, no, it can't be Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft because that's not out yet. It's up, it's up for pre-order just now. Uh, I'm looking at getting that one. Yeah, and we've had the eight. Now we've got the six. Now ten more dice. <laughs> Just a quick look, so you're not sure. Um, I need to bring that back up and that back up. Right, so we will go with a number three and then a four and a ten and five. Nine, four, ten, two, and seven. And the last one's a five. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Ah, don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. 
Right, I forgot. I'm going to be reading a lot, so. Put the spectre goggles back on. This is music you can really just chill and jam out to, isn't it? And we'll just shove all of those up there. Starting this club, now picking up the piano. Oh, dinner's arrived, what are you having? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Oh, cheese pizza. Fried pizza. I might have pizza tomorrow. Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part in the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? Square pizza. Nothing wrong with a bit of square pizza. You? Of all people? Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because... It's right in your name. Mon Ica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that's a joke that makes no sense in translation. Hmm? Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hehehe. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reaction aren't your reactions aren't as fun as you Yuri's or Seori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Seori anyway? Oh, there you are. Seori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Seori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Oh, uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Jack, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Siori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the only one. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Jack. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah. But she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. This time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm almost—I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. 
Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's just had has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying maybe the thing on her mind is you, Jack. Me? How on earth did you come to that conclusion? I didn't make that decision. The dice made that decision. Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Suri talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside her. What? No way. Siori is... always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Jack. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when you're when she's around you. I want you wonder how this would go if I was a girl. Like in game or real life. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What I do, what do I know anyway? What, uh, what, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. On the game, who knows? I'll try to talk to her. I'm sorry, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Suari is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Suari and gently talk to her. Ah, um, no idea. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? That I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realise that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her own. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something I do a lot, so it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Hey there, Cadence. Uh, welcome to the Gaming Kin. We're playing some uh, Doki Doki for the first time, and the dice rolls make all the decisions. Um, so I have no idea how well I'm doing at this game right now, <laughs> but uh, we're enjoying it.
No, not that I was staring at you or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if anything happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Ah. S sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Story and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah. I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Jack. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah. That actually sounds like the kind of thing I would have read in one of my books. I've got a book back there somewhere um, called Letters to a Young Poet by Rainer Maria Rilke, which was, given, which was recommended to me by a guy that played in a rock band from Los Angeles when he was touring uh, in, in the UK. It was an absolute great read. I always carry it with me. The, the book is all beaten up now, but still, read it occasionally. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Mm, I think that Seori is a very complex person. You got a new manga today? What one did you get? As I just eat my dice off the desk. I'm gonna grab this book. Because I'm gonna read it after stream. Have you seen the live action or new anime of The Way of the House Husband? I have not. Um, it's actually a new one. I've not actually heard of it before. Although. Um, Evie Falcone, who, as you know, plays D and D with us, uh, as well as Baldur's Gate and Perry, they 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 were shocked to find out I've never watched an watched the an anime or read the manga Initial D. You got the first one in Waterstones. Can't be picking. Can't be a wee trip to Waterstones. Pick up a nice new book. Manga only came out last year. I have manga. I have. I have these ones. I got this one for Christmas. Uh, volumes one and two. I've read up to volume eleven. Uh, and there's thirteen volumes. Ah. That's a good question. I should definitely check if these ones are in English, because <laughs> I can't read Japanese. But yeah, no. If if you like manga, I definitely recommend the Battle Royale books. They're really good. Um, there's a movie based on them as well, which I haven't watched, but I've heard is good.
but no, I'll keep an eye out for that one at some point. I'll let actually go and uh, where's my where's my bit of paper? There's a bit of paper, not the bit of paper I was looking for, but it'll do. Um, I'm not a big movie person, to be fair. Um, I've only ever read the manga. I've never actually read the, the book. And never seen the movie. I keep meaning to go watch the movie. Um, I actually think I own the movie. But uh, just never watched it. But I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the manga. The manga is in English. Because uh, the Tokyo Pop books are in English. See? Unless you're talking about the movie or the book, in which case uh, I know the movie's only in Japanese. Oh, the movie, yeah. Um, I'm fine with that. I watch uh, most of my anime in Japanese. Um, when I say most of my anime, I mean One Piece. Because that's like the only anime I watch. Uh, I think it's, it's subtitled though, so it's fine. It's fine, it's subtitled. And let's continue on with, uh, with the story. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what they may be, what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behaviour today too. And I also feel some concern for her. In your case, it looks like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That, that is... I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, ah. That's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is.
Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Siori. Who should I show my poem to first? That's easy. We'll roll a d4 to find out. That is a three. Well done, Jack. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this. It's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a li little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. And I guess, doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Jack? Eh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. Uh, it should pop up every five minutes. I don't know why it's not. But it pops up every now and again. But I heard the... I heard the routine. So... You, you can pick the next one. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always so... You're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome? How unlikable of me. Yuri. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. Or did the icon not come up? I don't know. It might be a, an alert box issue. But I can still hear it, so it's fine. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to these sorts, sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri. What? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. <clears throat> A marvel million, millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth...
majestically meets its surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a met take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki and I, so Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topis, topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Number three, Monica. Hi Jack. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people. I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Seori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. Uh -huh, I, that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I'm not shy, it's just... Uh -huh, I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Atsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to, be getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. But no, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. Anyway, I'll share with my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. An old tale ta tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning all purpose, 
all that was ever sought. Here I am, a feather, lost adrift the s lost adrift the sky, a victim of the current of the winds. Day after day I search. I, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last thin star glittering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and I find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much, much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Uh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little liter literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Right, uh, where is... I had a coin in the dice tray, it's no longer there. Where's my dice bag? The coin will be in there. Here we go. And it's heads, so we go to Siori next. Ah, ha, ha. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Jack. Uh, thanks. Mm hmm. Siori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? Uh -uh? Of course. Everything's fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want to nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. 
Well, all right. Hey, Jack. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end, yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? N no. Jack. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble, trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Jack. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. It's, that just leaves Natsuki. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying a little bit. Well, of course I'm trying. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Eh? N no. Gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Well, it would certainly seem that way. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's... Um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Ugh. <laughs> that Suki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. <laughs> I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry. I was too. <laughs> How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds her poem out to me like nothing even happened. <coughs> Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go, a shore, sh a shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light, the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that wa wa washes your worries away, I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day, I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap, in a way 
you thought you'd let you had in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me be your shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to learn you'll learn to love yourself again. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. You can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Was it just me or did you so say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh... Stagnating air is common foreshadowing for something that, that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. <laughs> Look, the only thing different is that Siori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Siori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown, thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. That's okay, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she, was act she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously. Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Siori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let me decide. Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. That's okay. We'll be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them and different flavours. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. <coughs> Suri will be helping me design them. As for Yuri, Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Hmm? Guys, can you help me come up for something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. N no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. N now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, 
you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Jack. The one who is the one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend a weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Jack may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, you may be more suited to assist him with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard can it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Jack to... What are you saying? It will be extremely, extreme, extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Jack to decide who he'd like to con who he'd like to contribute. How he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really got the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Jack, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... I do not have a D3. So, I am going to... Oh no, it's, it's four choices. I have a D4. Awesome. One. That's okay. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Eh? Just a minute ago you were saying that, that that's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway. You'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. That's... good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a, it's hard, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes. Everything except the performance is going to be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Jack? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Natsuki starts pouting too. It's not, I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might, it might not be just that. Hmm? I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do, then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean, uh, Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look. Natsuki goes over and puts her hand on put, puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here. And you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're gonna make the atmosphere special. And that'll be really important for the way people feel during the performances. So 
You need to stop being dumb and give yourself more, a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, n not really, but Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki of all people to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smell and feel good about themselves. I'm, I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess that's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got any reading got to do any reading today, so fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Huh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. We literally would have gotten home and realised you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? Hmm. Natsuki gives me your number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I could have a guy over my house. My dad would kill me. <laughs> really. That's kind of strength if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now, and that's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you just say you were going to give me you, you were going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone. Uh, that that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is. So, all right, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Uh, never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuki is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. This is the chance I have to make something is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday, and it's time to save the game, just in case. And what we'll do is we'll take a short 10 minute break. Or less than 10 minute break. We'll just take a short break here. Uh, we will be back with more Doki Doki Literature Club shortly.
and welcome back. And yes, Hathian, I know as is one, it's die for one and dice for multiple. But uh, I always any horror game I've ever played, I always end up dead. So my my aim for this is to not be dead by the end. Right, shall we continue on? It is already Sunday. So hold on. Uh, I am also failing to see the horror, but uh, no doubt it'll appear. Just move things around. Uh, which girl? Um, I have no idea. Um, I mean, Yuri seems the most interesting. It's the kind of what kind of poetry is the kind of stuff I would have read. Uh, well, considering any time, like, so one of my buddies, Koro, he follows a streamer, he told them I was playing Doki Doki and their only words were good luck. Sleepy and Tom, their words were good luck. When you put, when you put Doki Doki Literature Club into Steam, one of the tags is horror. When you go into Doki Doki Literature Club and, uh... Steam, it says it's a psychological horror. So, we'll see. I don't know for sure, but all the signs there tell me it's horror. Might just be a complete troll. Who knows? We'll find out as we go along. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things. I kind of saw that one coming. But putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we may not have a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I, assume she, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Jack. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to... To, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a small, there's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much, not much has really changed, has it? Sorry's room is as messy as as it's always been. I also recognise the same stuff animal, animals and wall decorations that she had for years now. <laughs> If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but 
Wait, how did you know that? Suri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There was more silence between us. Suri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behaviour is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to s I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So Suri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Jack. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why I, the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Yee <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Ahaha. <laughs> Suri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Jack. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? Hey, <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Jack? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why... Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy in and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everybody happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just not to think about her? Why, Siori? Eh? Why is it you've never told me... Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. It's as if I knew I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Jack. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. 
No Jack. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Siori's face. I made you join a literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Siori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, ah, Jack. It's Siori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Jack. Siori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Siori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this. To me. Please don't do this. Jack. I. Siori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want for her is to know that I care. If you have it in yourself to call you selfish, then you have it to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Siori puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Jack. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Siori lets me go. And as she does, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like... How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Ah, uh, um... Ah... Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Siori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Mitsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Siori shakes her head. I know, too relatable, right? I'm kind of struggling a wee bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. As I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Mitsuki is about to come over too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I get that feeling, Hazen. I get that feeling. I should just... <clears throat> Ow. <clears throat> I should just focus on what's ahead of me.
I spend only a few minutes back at home, anxiously waiting that Sufi's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door and let her in. Sup. Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing that Sufi in something other than a school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped with a job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. I'm glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What, you're not even going to offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Jack? Come on. Since when did I... Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Nats Natsuki holds out to me. <laughs> this is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carry that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I'm, I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also be better than other people. But... Geez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. Ahaha. <laughs> what? That's a little more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey, hey. Now are you... Now you are treating me like a kid. I was just... Trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sex sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you, you should treat me like. Ah, ah. Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki? Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Huh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also. If that's what you're thinking, then you should know that you're, there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh, how would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey, was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Jack. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Now if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Uh, yeah, no, I, I get that. But some guys care, some guys don't. Some are more shallow than others. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid and plastic bags are strewn across every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. 
Jack, where did you put the food colouring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To colour the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different colour. That way, even if the flavours aren't different, everyone can still pick their favourite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. I think you're in like high school. M most in Japan, you would usually live in a in rented accommodation if you were too far, if your actual home was too far away. If you were, if you had the money, you would live alone. If not, you would have roommates, much like you know, college here. At least, that's how it's portrayed in media. Uh, ha having no experience of Japan in real life, other than food, um, I don't know if that's actually true. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what that Suki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food colouring in each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if you just look if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes light up. Like the ones you made on your first day, huh? I recall Natsuki probably presenting her cat shaped cu cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food col colouring then. It sounds like you're starting to understand. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know for sure. Um, it doesn't state whether you live with parents or not. I don't remember it stating that. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food colouring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got s stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Uh, the icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to em e emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my fingers towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah. The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble and turn. Gross. You got it, you got it on my face. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. <laughs> She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this. Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving it before shoving her finger towards my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Ah, <laughs> stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. 
I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. What? 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 Did, did you seriously just... Ah. Uh, uh, Natsuki is so surprised you can't figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Jack, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls, unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me just like that? How did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cough, 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 cough. <coughs> no wonder. You left the dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you even make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tree out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads, but the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven, then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, uh, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different coloured cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the no nozzles that is a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake, like happy birthday or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature seen by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcakes based on the word they like. Uh, hmm. I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid, but that's actually a really cute idea, so uh, maybe I'm getting it from you. But what's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Uh, we're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. But, well, Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you. Eh? Did you say something? N no nothing. Let's just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about it before, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, and we then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. <laughs> Sayori is the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, she'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already, and she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Ah, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. Then don't worry, I won't let her eat any. Ahaha. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Uh, yeah. I, I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so hopeless. Or helpless. Sayori always does listen to me 
but at that point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, the su that Suki is about ready to leave. Is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, that's okay. Huh? What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that if possible I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere, um, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me intensely, eh, uh, looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Jack, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki, Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Natsuki? Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-coloured cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I've felt it for a while now. Natsuki suddenly jumps back. Is it Sayori? Eh? Ah! Uh, hi, Jack. Sayori? Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Jack. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, uh, well, y you should have come... You should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well... I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori? I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Jack? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Jack. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wish... It's something I wouldn't trade anything else for. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but, Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Jack. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Jack, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anyone. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said, I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you. 
It's the Ori. Heads. I love you. Okay? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side. Then I know we'll both be happy. Jack. Suddenly, Siori wraps her arms tightly around me. Jack. This is... really okay? Yeah. I hold Siori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Jack. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Siori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Siori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why, even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Jack. It's okay, Siori. It might take some time for things to get better again. <clears throat> but no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Oh, you don't see what my character looks like. You see the back of their head, though. <laughs> oh, okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle any anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey Jack. Sewer gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad. This is the best thing for me, right? Uh, I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Siori? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Siori. I know that I love her, and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Siori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I've 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 been there, chat. I've been there. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. That's what Siori meant by not wanting any- Is that what Siori meant by not wanting anything to change? I do not have Mario Party for the Switch. I would go and buy it, because I actually want to play it. But, um... I've just pre-ordered two games on the Switch. First one obviously being Pokemon Snap, and the other one being The Colonists, which is available on PC. It's been out on PC for a, about a year and a half now or something, but uh, it came across my radar as a, a Switch game that's coming out, so I pre-ordered it because the team that have done the console port, I'm quite fr friendly with. I've not seen the new update, but I know that it make I I've read that it makes the game a hell of a lot more fun. Oh, 
Oh, nice. I definitely need to look into getting it and buying a couple of copies from some other people then. Or convincing a couple of other people to buy some copies. <laughs> Is this what Siori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Siori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all the days, I expected this would be the one where I'd be walking to school with Siori. But Siori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. I am definitely going to try and get a copy and get some other people to play it with me. Maybe do it on a stream. A mental break, you mean from this game? I think we'll get to the get back to the school. Save the game and call it a call it a night there. Uh, Natsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way about as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Siori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. And that's us at the school, so we will save the game here. Boom, even though we only just saved it a couple of minutes ago. Well, I don't know if or when I'm going to get it, because, like I said, I've already pre-ordered two games. Two games are going to get streamed. Um, colonists and uh, let's see. Uh, we'll quit out of the game since we've saved it. Uh, the colonists, uh, which will be quite fun to play. I'm looking forward to that one. And also, uh, new Pokemon Snap, which I am, as you know, I'm doing the giveaway of. Um, when that comes out, just need to put this back in its proper position for discording. And where is boom? Um, but yeah, I'm obviously, as you know, I'm doing the giveaway of the thing. Um, uh, no, the colonist is robots who create a colony, um, which will be a lot of fun. Um, in fact, what I will do is I will bring up a YouTube video of the trailer. Let you get like let, let you see. So this is made by a so this game's been out for about three years or so and it's coming out on console this year um, and it's made by it's made by mode 7 but the console port has been done by Ordoc Digital who do the Mars Horizon game which I've had a lot of fun playing on streams I already have Mario Kart I bought my switch with Mario Kart Um, I'll just go capture window capture. 
Um, is this one? Boom. There we go, we'll just push that up there. Um, we'll bring this in. Put it there. Do that. And yeah, here's the uh, trailer for the colonists. Provided that has gone full screen, yes. But yeah, that is the game, that is the other game I've pre-ordered for the Switch, which I will be uh, playing on stream when that releases. Um... That is currently, it's not actually, the pre-order is 10% off just now, so it's down to 17 dollars um, down from 19 dollars uh, it's only a saving of £2, but a saving is a saving, uh, that is direct from the Switch store. Um, it's currently available for pre-order on the uh, Switch eShop and Xbox store, uh, the Auric Digital, who are dealing with the console port have struggled to get it up for pre-order on the PlayStation Store, but PlayStation have announced it is coming to the console as well. And Auroch Digital, uh, I'm I'm pretty much becoming an unofficial, uh, <laughs> an unofficial ambassador for Auroch Digital at this rate, uh, but they are also working on a game which I'm quite interested in called Brewmaster, which uh, you kind of I'm surprised I've barely seen anything from it as well, um, but it looks so good, I really want to play it. Um, I've I've talked myself out of buying the PC version because I do need more excuses to play my Switch more often. I've got Zelda, I've got Pokemon, and now I have the Colonists. Um, but they also have Brewmaster coming out, which uh, if I bring up my Discord quickly... Um, Brewmaster is a game where you, I can't remember if you run a brewery or if you just, if it's like a sandbox game off the top of my head. Um, so it's uh, Auroch Digital. 
an arrangement isn't it yes uh. <clears throat> yes um so brewmaster discover learn and master the art of home brewing in the ultimate celebration of craft beer from perfect perfecting authentic chemistry driven brewing techniques to bottling and labeling in order to become an ultimate brewmaster in the first ever realistic beer brewing experience with all the tricks of the trade and the best equipment at your, at your disposal follow a recipe or experiment with a huge variety of real world ingredients and hone your skills in our friendly competitions earn beer tokens and upgrade to and upgrade your equipment to become an even better brewer Learn the basics of beer brewing, of the beer brewing process, with a range of recipes to choose from, or get creative with your own unique flavors. Create the ideal space to spend relaxing hours making your perfect beer. Perfect recipes, improve the taste, design and design your own labels, and submit your beers for local competitions. Tweak and personalize every element of your beer and boost your renown at beer festivals. Brewmaster is a detailed, authentic game driven by a simulation of deep brewing chemistry and a deep understanding of the real-life fermentation process. Uh, the hard formulas happen behind the scenes, allowing you to focus on the best bits of the beer brewing fun. Um, so I will be... Uh, that That's one I'll be doing on Steam. Um, I need to make sure I definitely still have it wish listed. It is indeed. Um, so I am going to see about uh, getting myself in on the alpha and the betas. So you'll be seeing uh, the development of the game as it goes on. Um, if I can get into them. Which will be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing the the alpha and the beta. Should I be able to, you know, become a part of the, the, the alpha program and the beta program. And I will be streaming my, my time playing it. Discussing it with you guys. And yes. Can we be Switch friends? I don't see why not. Um, I don't play much uh, multiplayer stuff on Switch, um, but uh, I I keep meaning to. But I kind of want to play Mario Kart and Smash Bros, and most other people want to play Animal Crossing, <laughs> or they don't have Mario Kart or Smash Bros. So um, yes, that is absolutely fine. Um, but. Uh, Mostly at the moment, it'll be I'll just be playing Pokemon Snap and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, just my kind of streaming games. Uh, just due to the fact that I don't actually spend a lot of time gaming when I'm not streaming these days. But yes, um, <laughs> Kart is great fun, even on even just on your own, right? Racing against the AI. Um. But I am going to call it there for the night. If you send, if you send me a whisper with your uh, Switch friend code, I will add it the next time I am on the Switch, which will be not tomorrow because we're playing Pokemon. Is it Pokemon tomorrow? Yeah, which which will be tomorrow because we're playing Pokemon. Am I, am I where in an hour? I won't be. I, I will be in my bed in an hour. Um, because I have my 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 job to go to in the morning. Um, but yes, that has been up from us here at Gaming Ken. As always, my name is Jack, and 
yes Friday for Snap. We will be doing we will be playing Pokemon Snap on Friday and we'll be playing Leg we'll be continuing on with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Saturday. Uh Sunday I Oh, there's a thing in the never, isn't there? Um It's Wednesday. Um I don't know if if uh, I get a ping and I'm still awake, I will uh, pop in. But uh, I don't. I do not know. He's not pinged any of us, so who knows? We shall see. If I am awake, I may. If I am awake, I'll either watch it from my bed, or I'll be in the chat. We shall see, because tomorrow was supposed to be my day off, but I'm not getting it, so. Uh, yeah, but once I take my meds, I'm passed out in about 20 minutes, so. It probably is EVNF. I know that Drunky Friend's not doing it just now, so. For he has children's to take care of. But yes, that's been it from us here at Gamekin. As always, my name is Jack, and we've been playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Join us tomorrow, where we are doing Pokemon Snap, plus the giveaway of the game. Um, and... Yes, there's always room for you here at Game Weekend if you want to be a friend. And as I say far too often in these times, please do stay safe out there.